today we have gathered here for the 7th annual dabulkar and kalburgi memorial lecture a lecture series a lecture series instituted institute instituted a lecture series instituted in the memory of dr narendra dabulkar and professor m m kalburgi dr narendra dabulkar was a medical doctor social activist rationalist and author from maharashtra and not only this he he was a kabaddi player kabaddi player he had also he had also represented in india in india kabaddi tournaments dr dabulkar awarded by awarded padmashri padmashri in 2014 Dr Dabulkar work as a work as a regular doctor for 12 years after this after this he was a, he got involved with movement for social justice such as baba adaus ek gaon ek panotha which means one village one well initiative this movement was against untouchability gradually dr dabulkar focus more attention on eradication of superstition and he founded maharashtra andhashraddha nirmulan samiti this samiti conducts this samiti conducts campaign against superstition by confronting by confronting dubis tantrics dubis tantrics and immoral holy men who promise miracles cures for ailments the samiti also works to stop human and animal sacrifices that are done due to superstition according to article 51a of the indian constitution every citizen has the duty to promote scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform dabulkar was against superstition but he was he not against religion he was working to spread scientific awareness among the people one morning dabulkar was shot dead by two unidentified gunmen on 20 august 2013 Af in Pune, after Dabulkar's murder, the Maharashtra government cleared the anti-superstition and black magic ordinance. After amendments, this was finally enacted as a law on 18 December 2013. After the murder of Dabulkar, here we proceeded in the the university to institute a lecture in his memory. the first lecture was delivered in in 2013 by ms mukta dabulkar daughter of dr dabulkar an activist on the work of maharashtra andhashraddha nirmulan samiti the second lecture was delivered by professor sundar sharukai philosopher on scientific and ethical rationality in november 2014 after the murder of professor m m kalburgi in august 2015 his name was added to the to this series he was also a rationalist professor kalburgi was an expert on vachana sahitya which is a form of bhakti literature the third lecture in this series now onwards named dabulkar kalburgi memorial lecture was delivered by professor gopal guru political scientist on concepts of rationality in 2015 the fourth lecture was delivered by sushil joshi independent writer and science editor in 2016 the fifth lecture was delivered by professor romila thapar on shaping identity 
nationalism, secularism and democracy in 2017. The sixth lecture last year was delivered by Dr. Jayanta Naradikar on in what century are we living and today's seventh lecture will be delivered by Sri Arvind Gupta sir. Now I would like to briefly introduce Sri Arvind Gupta. He completed his B.Tech from IIT Kanpur. He left his corporate job to pursue his passion making science fun for children. He was written 30 books on science activities, translated 500 books into Hindu and presented 120, 125 films on science activities on Durdashan. He worked at, a, at the Children's Science Center at the Inter University Center of Astronomy and Astrophysics for 11 years in Pune. The center produced the center produced 800 600 sorry 8600 short videos on simple experiments on science toys in 20 different languages the video have been have been viewed by over 90 million children worldwide he has received many honors including the distinguished alumnus award of iit kanpur and the padma shri the title of his talk is Science and Children from the Concrete to the Abstract is one of the cardinal principle of education. Before children can understand anything, they need to experience seeing, touching, hearing, tasting, smelling, choosing, putting things together. The hands, the heart and the head are all integrated in these activities. Children needs a variety of experience with different materials before they gain insight about concepts of, of science. This lecture will show some possibilities of doing creative science using low cost material in the classroom. So now I request to Sri Arvind Gupta sir to share his valuable thought with us. Please sir. Thanks a lot for this very, very generous introduction. Uh, she talked about uh, Dr. Marit Dabulkar, apart from other things, he uh, was my very dear friend. And uh, he used to visit a science center in America several times. And uh, uh, I was privileged to, you know, 10 years back was Professor Yashpal's 80th birthday. Yashpal was a NASA scientist, PhD from the MIT, and he had many, many positions. So it was Professor Yashpa's 80th birthday, and uh, inside Indian National Science Association, they were they were campus in the IDO, and uh, that was open, and uh, the, the country was facilitating his 80th birthday. And I didn't know that uh, I was invited independently to Dr. Dabu, and we just happened to share the same room for four days. called as Makers of Modern India. It provides 26 eminent Indians whose ideas had a major impact in shaping our republic. Out of these 26, six happy people in our city. You start from the Pule, the Firebrand, Tilak, to Gopal, Krishnabokhle, Gandhi's political mentor, Tarabai Shinde, Hami Dalwai. Karve is not mentioned there because Karve did not leave behind any significant writings, but he is Gandhi Bharatra. So Pune has a history, Maharashtra has a history of 150 years of social reform. And uh, Dhamalkar was a, a, was a, was a link in this long chain of social reforms. And I was telling that I come from a, my hometown is a place called Bareli in Yupi, which is the barren deserts culturally in many, many ways. But once I went to Maharashtra, I was, uh, in, in the city shape, I did such amazing interventions in Maharashtra. And which I think uh, I'm, I'm penning down what, what Pune did to me. 
<laughs> not the other way around. Uh, well, I, I, after work, I worked for Tempo for five years. And uh, in between, I took a year off. I was not happy at the job. And uh, in 72, as a student, 70 years student, I worked at Elsa Kupa. He left me to that day. And he said something called the Ushida Bath Science Institute. I took a year off from my job and uh, 78 and worked for the went and worked in the HSTP. Now this is a village based program to make science fun. Uh, millions of schools in rural India, no laboratory. All science is learned by road children, mug up definitions, mug up formula, come exams and just spit it off. They go from class one to the other without really understanding anything because they've not and they said that this is a very, very bad way of learning science. Uh, children must actually do small experiments. And they, what they try to do is that they do not be expensive. We have this image of a science laboratory in a school with beards and pipettes and fancy glass toy, plasticware, and they're all locked in a cupboard. I've been privileged to visit 3,000 schools, and I want to see the science lab because that tells me a great deal about the school. And if you see it very carefully, you see a grime of dust on all the test tubes because all this stuff was made for the inspector, not the children. And so this is a very sad commentary on And this is 10, 12 years back. There's a group from Ahmedabad, which did a study of the elite schools in our four metros. Are the children actually studying science? And they found that they were not. It's largely wrote even in our urban areas, so-called very elite schools in the cities. The situation very bad. I went over there and I said the challenge lies that you know, Kanpur is very far off, where I studied Pune, very far off. So to use a small village, there was a weekly hut. So I said, I'll go to this hut, village bazaar, and buy, pick up every artifact available on the roadside. And the challenge lies in trying to design something with this, because this is locally accessible. So there were these small mirrors, bangles, <laughs> bindis, a lot of other trinkets that you find on the roadside, people. And when I was getting my bicycle inflated, I found this cycle valve tube. This, if you reckon, this is the, uh, when you actually pump in air on a bicycle, is a bit of this. Today, if this gets torn, you may have to pay one rupee. This was 10 paisa of it, I bought 10 feet of this. And, and well, within a very short while, now you can just see that this is, uh, if you just take two matchsticks, you remove the sun from both the ends, and two matchsticks go in very, very snugly. They meet head on. And what you make is a very flexible joint of two like that. And you start by teaching angles to children. Acute angle, a right angle, obtuse angle, straight angle. Right from zero degrees to three degrees, you can depict any angle. This is also like a flexible coupling. In engineering, you know, if you have a machine, uh, a motor and a machine, uh, you could have a straight coupling and the motor can. But you could also have a coupling at any angle. Very flexible kind of a coupling. If you had three of these together, you could loop them and you could make a very nice tonic, three matchsticks. And because the matchsticks are mass produced in a factory, so all these are equilateral, it's equilateral prime. All these angles are automatically degrees. If you have four of them, well, you make a square, you make a pentagon, you make a hexagon, you make all these polygons. And they have some very, very interesting properties. If you like, take the hexagon, for instance, these are all flexible joints. They transmit moments. If you just pull this out, this becomes a rectangle, this becomes a parallelogram. But this is like an amoeba shape, which is constantly changing its other profile. Very, very flexible. If you inspect the pentagon, for instance, this becomes a boat shape, a trapezium. This becomes a house shape, a combination of a square and a triangle. If you go further, this becomes an isosceles triangle. Very, very shaky. The square may look very square and prim, but if you just give it a push, this becomes a rhombus. Barfi ban jata, patan ban jata, bahut hi But the triangle is the only rigid shape. Now this is the bedrock of all, all mechanical and civil engineering. If you wish to make any structure strong, you've got to divide this into triangles. This is the very famous principle of triangulations. And school going children could actually hold the concept in their own hands by doing this. And if you had a joint of two like this, you could stick a third matchstick to this and make a T joint. Make a hole throughout, make a hole through this, and push this through, you'll get a T joint. And if you have a T joint, 
then that lends to a lot of possibilities. You take two squares, put four legs, you make a cube. This is the tetrahedron. Tetra means four made of four triangles. Tetrahedron also happens to be the strongest structure found in nature. As a matter of fact, if you put four marbles inside the tetrahedron, in between is a little small bead which you can't see. This is the chemical symbol of, or the chemical structure of methane, CH4. Four atoms of the hydrogen, the four atoms of the tetrahedron, in between is a little carbonate. School going children could make very simple chemical models. As to seeing a picture in the textbook, if you hold a concrete model, it gives you a much better feel for. And once you have these, uh, you can know, also make a joint of four, you can make a joint of six. These are two bits of cycle value. All you need is a thorn or a needle, push one inside the other. And once you have this, you can make many, many. Like for instance, you can see this pyramid, the top joint is a joint of four. And once you make these basic modules, you can put this on top of the other and make another structure. It's like a house the, uh, with a pyramidical roof. You can take the, you can take the prison for instance and put a tetrahedron on top and make another structure. Uh, but this is the very famous icosahedron. Ico means 20, uh, made of 20 triangles. You need 30 matchsticks for making this. You can see these are all pentagonal faces. The nice thing about this is that you can flex it. This becomes like an igloo. And you can, now this I didn't, this is 41 years back, it's 1978, a very young engineer, 23 years old, and I thought this is so much better than making trucks. So I made my choice, much more fun, just sheer fun, and I thought that uh, the best thing in life is to make your own passion the source of your living. And then you don't have to work with a multinational, you don't have to work in a university like this, you don't have to do, <laughs> you can do better things, right? So. <laughs> Uh, this is what I've done much of my life. Uh, traveled to 3,000 schools, worked in 25 countries, uh, made films for Doodarshan. I made my first film 30 years back. It was beamed on Doodarshan 200 times. 200 times in Doodarshan. Doodarshan, at that time, there was only one channel. Doodarshan was the only channel. So it reached to people which no other channel could ever reach me. Now this is, I'm going to show you just a glimpse of some of the possibilities of doing great science using so one is that, you know, all business is noted that activity-based science is very expensive and uh, Indian schools can't afford it. Now this is all bunk up. <laughs> 30 years, 40 years of the Hushimabad Science Pro, and they worked in over a thousand schools that you could do great stuff with very simple materials. Now this is an ordinary straw, flattened on one side. cut a kind of a pencil point. Now this is like a reed. It's like a baby crocodile's mouth. I'm going to put this in my, my mouth and blow my lungs out. <laughs> Best way to disturb a class. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in science you're taught that vibrations lead to production of sound. Which you could actually, you don't need to muck it up. You could see this, you could feel it. And uh, the more experiential, the wider the experiential base, the better you understand. And uh, so I'm now going to keep this outside. Instead of blowing out, I'm going to suck in there. And if you just concentrate on this little tip, you'll see what's happening. It's opening and closing at a very fast rate, it's vibrating. So vibrations produce sound, could be a very fun activity. It costs very little money to do this. You don't need to go reach your school to use this. Well, uh, I've just cut two holes away. And what we are inching is towards a flute of sort. Thodi besuri hai, par hai basuri. Par ek bahut hi achha prayog hai, jo aap kabi nahi bhule. This is I'm going to keep blowing at it, keep making the sound, and chopping it, keep chopping it, making it short and short. Something very amazing happens. You will forget everything, but this is going to keep clinging to you, keep reminding you, uh, this one. Ek 
छोटी सी स्वाम में पूरे सरगम के दर्शन हो जाते हैं बिल्कुल ब्रह्मांड के दर्शन जैसे एंड वी आल्सो सो दैट द लॉन्गर द स्ट्रॉ द लोअर द पिच एंड द शॉर्टर इट बिकम्स द हायर गोस द पिच द शॉर्टर स्ट्रॉ हैज अ हाईएस्ट पिच एंड एज यू कैन सी वेरी हाई पिच वेल एवरी डे ऑफ माय लाइफ आई एम इनवाइटेड टू सम स्कूल और द अदर एंड or oh, every time the children teach me something new. because uh, children just do the opposite of what you tell them and that's great hope for any nation because they're born disobedient <laughs> there is too much obedience in our society the gandhi ji talked about disobedience but children are born disobedient if you ask them to go on the right side just for the kick of sin they'll go on the left side that's the only hope for humanity right and we need many more disobedient people. Scott because they are not not people who are who are yes yes but people who ask very critical and tough questions so this is what the children taught us they make very funny noises like this these are primordial sounds as children we all have made these sounds so this is it Now, with a straw, you can do many, many experiments. This you just take a straw, just take a, a plastic straw, take a take a broomstick, and push it right in the middle. Take about two finger widths, make a half cut to the left, another half cut. You can see that both these arms can swivel, they can move, and you bend them and make a triangle. Very simple. Just take a bit of scotch tape, sticky tape, and tie it around like a belt. And this is exactly what's been done. the tape is not transparent you won't be able to see this and this makes a extremely nice sprinkler as you can see just if i just spin it around it's very amazing <laughs> this is artificial rain which you can create right inside the classroom <laughs> and this is a little centrifuge uh, professor anil kapoorkar who was the chairman of the atomic energy commission was also the chairperson of ayuka after some time and he was very fond of us so he would come to our when we visited ayuka he would just poop into our small science room and he said that the iranians would be very happy with the centrifuge <laughs> for obvious reasons <laughs> another one with a straw and this is uh, just take a straw this is like a bigger model you can see it more clearly just a fat straw see what the ends flatten them and tape them and then you double this cut to nearly about the two ends and good a square hole in the middle and then with the scissors you nip the top right corner and the bottom left corner you can see two small holes over here and this is not very strong i just cut a hole over here the reason for this hole is if i shut the cell and if i blow air would come out at right angles and so this one goes very neatly inside this i shut this hole and if i blow something pretty amazing happen very nice spinner this is also uh new to sir law motion that the reaction is equal op reaction air is coming out like a jet from this hole and this it pushes into this direction from this so it gets a torque in this if i if i just reverse it you will see that the direction of rotation uh, there is a smaller version of this One of these fruity straws, small one, and ordinary straw. We didn't use tape over here; just sealed it with the candle. And again, cut to opposite corners. This hole is very difficult to make. You can't make it with scissors. You get this ticker checker punch, single punch, and just very neat, clean hole in this. This fruity straw grows beautifully into this. We actually costed this. This. It is global rates cost ten paisa. So this is absolutely priceless. That's the only word for it. <laughs> it's priceless. Uh, no one makes it. No one is interested in this. Uh, uh, captains of industry are not interested in this. Toy industry is not interested. In very low cost toys like that. But this, you see a gleam in the child, in the eyes of every child, when every child wants to own a toy like that. 
So one of the one of the great books on uh, toys in India is a book by Sudarshan Khanna. It's called as the Joy of Making Indian Toys. Sudarshan Khanna was in the National School of Design for 35 years, and somehow right in the beginning, he was teaching about materials, composite materials, properties, and it just dawned on him that traditional toys, uh, so-called folk toys, made the most optimal use of materials. And as we said, the cat has got nine lives. Uh, <coughs> Once a material lives one life, it is transformed. We talk about the new life, it becomes a new life in the form of a new life. And uh, he made many, many toys. Now, one of this is... This is a broomstick, a, a coconut. In Kerala, it's an eagle. One long, one short one, and you tie them. Probably it came from Kerala. And these baby coconuts fall off the tree. So you take a baby coconut and push this into the head of the baby coconut. Where I live in Pune, there are no baby coconut trees. So a piece of rubber slipper, uh, that's the only innovation in this. Some way to wear. And you put it into your index finger. This is the long side, this is the small side. And you spin it towards the long side. And this is like this. This is like the Sudarshan Chakra. The centrifugal force, centripetal force are very big words for even teachers who teach them because these are very abstract forces. It's only small toys like this experiments like this which give you some insight into what this force is. Otherwise, you can parrot it and you can, you can transmit this knowledge to the next generation or transmit this fraud to the next generation without understanding anything, right? But this is something which gives you a feel as to what centrifugal forces, what centrifugal forces. The poorest child could afford it. This doesn't need a, this is truly sacred economy, as Prasanna talked about, right? <laughs> uh, this is, well, a few years back, you know, some good things are getting into the Indian system. Uh, one should not be critical or one should appreciate what the good things are. One is that there is a gradual shift from the talk in chalk, you know, lecture method uh, to a more project-based method. If, even if it's not implemented, it's been talked about, right, which itself is a good shift. And uh, four years back, the government, you know, Modi ji gave the slogan of uh, Make in India. But somewhere, very deep within, uh, he also realized the hollowness of this slogan. That uh, unless kids start doing things with their own hands in schools, there would never be a make in India. This realization dawned at the government level, and they started something which needs to be saluted. It's called as the Atal Tinkering Labs. They started this, and they're very well funded. Uh, they get a 10 lakh rupee grant as a capital expenditure, 10 lakh rupees for running expenses for three years something like 5,000 schools, and they could be private schools, they need not be government schools, have been given the adult tinkering lab. It is not related to the curriculum, you don't get marks for it, because we know that how the physics practicals happen in a school. If you're in the good books of the teacher, and if you copy, <laughs> write everything very neatly, without understanding a thing, you get full marks in the practicals. So this, this I think, I mean, many students who, don't, who can't soak up and spit out, don't get 90%, it would bolster their confidence that, well, we can do so many things with our hands. We see 90 percent time. The top chap can't do it, but we can do it. So it is going to, unka zameer buland ho So it's, it's a very, very nice thing. I'm all for it. So this is, uh, you saw this. Uh, this is a similar thing. Uh, five years back, a boy in fourth class, fourth standard boy in Pune got a prize for this. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can you figure out, you know, structurally both are the same. There's a little thing different there, are these two arms over here. Of course, this can also spin. What do you think this child had in mind when he designed this? For him, it was a satellite. Uh, these are, all these satellites have these solar panels. You can't be carrying heavy batteries up in space. It's very expensive to take this. Uh, so these are solar panels. You generate your own electricity for communication, whatever controls. And the wood satellite just spins around here. So, a very extremely nice thought uh, by a young chap, and he really deserved a prize for this. And often we think that uh, this is the bicycle spoke, and this is a woodpecker, and we just put a small spring over here. This might remind you of one of your childhood toys. It's like a woodpecker coming down. Um, it's friction and gravity, uh, both at glorious work. You know, 
when I say about toys is that uh, without using very big words, children get an intuitive feel for phenomena, right? And uh, someone said that, uh, many people ask me that, uh, what is the purpose? There's no scientific principle. Why are you teaching this? Right? <laughs> Often I'm bombarded with these questions. And I think that play is a very serious business. Play is much more serious than, than curricula. Right? <laughs> play is serious business. If kids just play, you see happiness on their face, later on uh, they will not take up guns. They will not shoot anyone because they've been happy individuals as children. Very important to have kids happy and you know engage with things otherwise like Hitler you know he had a very bad childhood <laughs> and we know that what he did you, you create these monsters right uh, so you know happy children plays very serious business so whether they understand science or don't whether they get into the IIT that's not my purpose at all is to just the joy of just playing and being engaged yourself is so important right then you don't have a grudge against others, right? <laughs> you're happy with yourself, and then you're happy with the world around you. If you're ha unhappy with them, uh, then <laughs> the whole world is the enemy. <laughs> you've got to create the other all the time. It's very important. Play is very, very serious business. All other is secondary. Even the economy is secondary, right? <laughs> they play is very serious business. Uh, I had a very nice mother. I must tell you about my mother. Uh, my, my parents never went to school. And... Uh, my mother was such a nice person. Uh, they should have not been to school, but my uncles, my mamas. At that time, you know, 70 years back, 80 years back, we were not allowed to go to school, right? That's the reason. But she had seen her brothers. My, my one mom who had gone to Switzerland in the 50s, a dietary general for ordnance factories. The second one went to Agra Medical College. The three plaques. Distinguished student, distinguished teacher, distinguished principal. Professor Naval Kishore appears on all three plaques. Rockefeller scholar John Hopkins, first male gynecologist in North India. So, so she knew that the, the power of education. So she put all of us into the best school, convent school in a small town. And the nice thing was, never asked me that tomorrow do you have a test? <laughs> How did you fare in your exam? She said that I had a little small broken suitcase with all kinds of odds and I'd be playing the whole day. And she said, he's happy, let him be. That's it. Much, here, much later when I left my job, my uncles who were in very high positions by that time were cribbing. That, you know, one day he would do this, that. My mother just made one statement. Achha kara ki nokri chodi. Ab kuch nek kaam karega. Just a two-liner. <laughs> just, just a two-liner, which has sustained me for 40 years. And I lost her very early in life. 80, 1980, she passed away. So this is the now this is uh, you can just see this these are two two ring magnets these are all made in China ferrite magnets extremely cheap 50 paisa each uh, despite the transport from China several levels of profits <laughs> right and uh, but you can just see this you can see the lower end is vibrating hmm? very amazing lower end is vibrating and uh, but these are these are sixth class kids from, a, uh, from almost a municipal school. The Pune University is a huge campus, 111 acres. This is a British governor's summer residence. Someone got sense to make it into a university. <laughs> Otherwise, some Kumar builders or this builder, <laughs> they, they would have colonized the whole place. Now, inside this 111 acres is only one school. This is run by the Karve Shikshan Sansthan. It's called the Vidya Peet Shala. So when 2003 we started, we said this is our neighborhood school. Right. Every day there would be bus loads of kids coming from Bombay because there's no equivalent to our center in Bombay. Right? <laughs> they would come. I said we must do at least good to the kids who are our neighbors, absolute neighbors. So for eight years we ran a science club in the Vidya uh, These kids used to come to our center, make all these, and they were as good as any bat. The one is the team. For, for 13 years, every week two free workshops. 50 kids from a school, they just need to bring them. You spend three hours with us, make a dozen things, and take it back with them. No science center. You have this, um, what is this? Vishweshara Museum. You know, there's no equivalent to this small center, which, which could actually make things and take it back with you. Nothing to sell, absolutely free. Now, 
two boys class 8 they made this you have a little cup take a paper cup just made a hole through it take man inside take a magnet outside they stick to each other no glue and if you take the put them into a eight class kits kids are not just consumers of knowledge they are producers of knowledge we are afraid to ask them questions and only the stale stuff we want them to regurgitate again and again but you leave them free and to their own devices a good amazing to me no reference in literature anywhere eight class kids of a municipal school as bright or as bad as anyone else in the world right this has been just uh, this one of those a bottle uh, from a bottle it's a, from a plastic bottle just a hook cut and i've just punched two holes so you weave this put these two matches inside and these are kids again which has been there for a hundred years this has been a darling of physics every inspired physics teacher in the last hundred years has shown the story you take a pencil with a rubber on one end very easy to find so it's a part of every child's geometry box you make a couple of notches over here just take a pen knife a wee notch deepen it they should be deep five or six notches over here take a card sheet make a small, small rectangle fan punch a hole in the middle you can't make it with a pin it should be a big hole you can see that there is a play right it should not be tight that's crucial it's a little the pin head is very tiny so put a little rubber as a stop that's it this is a broomstick if i rub this something amazing happens this is foxed this is non trivial physics the ncrt would never touch a toy like that <laughs> <laughs> so called experts don't have an answer to this. <laughs> how, how on earth you can make it go the other way around, right? Kids are very good with this. And this is a survival toy. Most schools are boring from the word go. You know, self respecting, most self respecting child would ever gone to school. They go to school only because parents push them to schools. <laughs> schools are bad from the word go. Right? So this is a survival toy. You have a pencil to write. Once the teacher is looking towards the board, you can. <laughs> this is what clever people do <laughs> to survive this very tough world. Right. You must carry one with you. <laughs> very nice. Teachers always ask us, this is not part of the NCRT curriculum. This is not part of the Maharashtra syllabus. Why on earth are you teaching us? Right. Very valid question. <laughs> we are faced with bodies like this all the time and uh, when we say this is part of the curriculum <laughs> every curriculum on earth <laughs> this is the famous Newton's disc uh, 400 years back Newton discovered that white light is composed of seven colors so these intermittent colors and uh, here is the disc you can this is a fun toy you can make it spin no motor no battery and that's it So go to save our skin and tell them, well, have you done this? <laughs> they have a, they have, they've got a stock answer for this. Newton na kara to sachi hoga. Itna badi hasi hasi thodi ban jate. But this is, these are fun toys. Been around for a very long time. Very, very long time. This is a seventh class boy who, who worked with us, uh, a Dalit boy, his father is a cobbler and uh, named Shivaji Mani and uh, he did this. You take a piece of wire, um, two feet, wind it on a, you know this, or construction going on, binding wire, uh, wind it on round pins, you get a small spring, pull out the spring, so it becomes a spiral. You can see there are two beads, 
it's a piece of colored straw. And oh, look what it does. Oh. Right. Now, what is this size behind this? <laughs> Why are you teaching it? These are questions. I think if you see a gleam, what should be the curriculum? Not, not with, all curriculums in the world are narrow and they're political, right? All curriculums in the world are narrow and political. They want to catch hold of your mind, right? And so we must not take curriculums very seriously, right? <laughs> we won't take them very seriously, right? And you widen them, deepen them, right? And very nice try. The kids just love it. That's it. Uh, much of our downloads are from China, by the way, right? We have 1,100 toys on our website, all documented <laughs> with a small camera, and much of the downloads are from China. Someday they'll be manufactured into toys and sold back to us, but that's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> uh, there's something which, uh, which we, you know, Nehru had this vision, uh, he writes, uh, to put a microscope in every school so the children could peer into the microcosm. They could see small things. This is Nehru in vision. I think if Nehru was alive today, <laughs> he would have added one more thing, a motor, a very humble motor to his vision. <laughs> this is the simplest motor on earth. Irrespective of what the curriculum is, you need to make a motor. Uh, but life would come to a standstill without motors. In a typical middle class house, if you just make a list, it's in the mixie, it's in the washing machine, it's in the fans, it's in the cooler, it's in the AC. Um, it's all over. It's in the pump, which uh, drive, the motor drives a pump for the overhead tank. A dozen places. How many of you have ever made a motor? How many of you? Two are not bad. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> but majority. Now this is reflective of the situation of science, of science in this country. How badly we teach it. It's a very mutilating way we teach science. And one of the reasons is because the teachers come from such a mutilated system. It's, it's systemic. It's not that the teachers are bad, but they, they're bad human beings, but they come through such a rotten system where to mug up, to reproduce, and to spit out is the only way of cracking it. And we are duplicating it in the IIT JE. I have some nephew staying with my sister very close because he can go down to those FIT G classes, those utterly boring, they make a mincemeat out of your neurons, right, in five years and you left fit for nothing else, right? It's a very sad commentary what they do to you, to you, right? You have no life left of your own because one is that you are living the aspirations of, of someone else. <laughs> There was a great definition of science which the Buddha gave 2,500 years back. He said, don't believe in anything because your grandfather told you. Don't believe in anything because your teacher told you. Right? Don't believe in anything because it's in your scriptures. Test everything out in reality. And if you find it to be true, and in the benefit of large numbers, then you embrace it. Now that's, that's a very good definition of science, right? It should be for the benefit of many, and you must test it. It should be evidence-based. You can't be making tall claims when none existed. Just for glorification, just for die-fi, you can't be doing that. Now this is a very, very simple motor. The most expensive thing is the battery. It happened to be everyday battery, so I had to blanch it. <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> it is dangerous, okay? <laughs> they did a lot of harm. Okay, these are two safety pins. This black thing is a old cycle tube. It's very difficult to find broad rubber bands. A broad you can, you know, they use for many kinds of things. You can, but, but India, I can tell you, go to Bangalore, very difficult to find a broad rubber band. But India has given birth to Jugar, right? <laughs> if you don't get a thing, think. If you can't find a thing, think. Think of alternative. And the bicycle tube is, okay. these are these two, again, one rupee. This is uh, get into it. So just a copper wire. Ten minutes to make a motor like that, and you see a gleam in a child's eye. 
1990, I did this motor. Uh, well, that's a, something called as a brushes in a DC motor, uh, which is a very difficult part. In Hushungabad science, we struggled for 20 years trying to find this. We make all kinds of odd contraptions. Uh, only the very skilled could make it. Right? <laughs> but this is millions of kids have made it. So there's, I'll tell you the key, just in part. This is it. If you have the battery, five rupees. That's it. So the poorest child can afford the motor. If you have the motor, Faraday's laws of induction uh, come starkly in front of your eyes. You don't have to mug up these theories. Uh, kids would be hooked to science. I just remember 1990, I had my arm broken and uh, collar blade was broken, so I was in a cast. So uh, this, the, the, the essential part is the brushes, which comes from the physics teacher. This the American Association with Advancement of Science, they bring out a magazine called the physics teacher. And for 25 years, uh, there was a column called a spin, string and sticky tape experiments, in that, which has been collated into a volume on my website. String and sticky tape, you know, how to do science with very, very simple, ordinary materials. And with this idea of the, you know, what is, you know, this is insulated copper wire. If the if motor gets burnt out, you have to rewind the motor. This is copper with a layer of varnish, like a nail polish thin varnish on top, which, is, which makes it insulating. Otherwise, this would be a, sh a short coil. So this is all one, one, every coil is insulated from the other coil because of the insulation. You take one meter of copper wire, wind it in the battery, it becomes like a spring, slinky comes out, tie a knot here. If I put it like this, insulated, no current flow. Now what you do is, you can see the change. This is all copper. Can you see shining copper? This is brown color. One is totally conducting. On this side, three sides are shining. Top, the right and the left. But this is still brown. This is all copper. This is three sides copper. One side. This is the heart of the enterprise. Whenever the copper is in contact, current flows through this. Whenever current flows through coil, it becomes electromagnet. And the north of this will attract the south of this. Right? But then the insulation comes in. It gets demagnetized. But because of the momentum, it still tends to rotate. Once again, it's magnetized. This is the heart of any DC motor. This is this. Millions of kids have made this motor. Very, very nice. Something which came much later on was this. It had to weigh the... Now these are... You saw those black magnets. These are uh, ferrite magnets. Very, very cheap. Um, 30, 40, 50 paisa. These are... They look like stainless steel. Uh, there's an element called as uh, neodymium. It's a rare earth. These are new dynamic magnets, and they all come from China. China has the largest reserves of rare earths, and they're sitting put on it. So anywhere in the world, these very strong, it's very difficult to separate these two magnets. They're so powerful. And so this is, medical technology produces so much of junk, right? Often they throw it in rivers, the syringes in the toxic stuff, and they get away with it. This is the old syringe. We have nothing to do with the main needle, just the plastic barrel of it. You take the thin insulated copper wire, 36 gauge, the copper is expensive, you use thick wire, it will weigh more, it will cost more, a thousand tons. There is a start, there is the end, scrape both them and attach a lead, that's it. And these two magnets I can put inside, you can see that they can reciprocate. And if I shake them, it's like a moving magnetic field inside a coil, something amazing happens. You generating electricity. This is how the electricity was generated. It's just only a, a bigger generator. But the principle doesn't change. The principle remains the same. Now imagine a girl, a Dalit girl, a Musar girl in, in, in Bihar making a small thing. In my city, 10,000 kids have made the sitting generator. Pune has an enormous appetite for science. Because I told you the social reasons for it. Enormous appetite for science. Ayuka put up, set up 30 years back, Ayuka put up a telescope in its campus with the ordinary people. Three kilometer line, very organized line, people would just peek for five seconds, uh, see the moons of Jupiter, uh, or you know, something and just go off. But such is the appetite for science. I think Bangalore is another city which has a very strong tradition. But this is, this is, this is truly empowering, right? You generate power. It's truly empowering that uh, Imagine a girl like that. Today I light up a small LED, tomorrow I light up my village. Right? <laughs> That's the kind of feeling which you get. 
when we do no one makes so many pumps 31 pumps on our website that's the website um, I showed you just the sprinkler I show you one more pump and this is very nice it's, it's a um, it's a pump to blow up a balloon put the balloon the balloon mouth is too big so I'm going to double it up it's a true pump right. if I keep doing like this ultimately the balloon is going to pop right the best thing a child can do with the toy is to break it right <laughs> we have this slogan on our website the best thing a child because it's a very very uh, provocative statement it's uh, why do children break toys because they are the only curious cats left and they want to know what is inside the tummy and a good toy design should enable kids to peek inside and you should be able to take it all out and put it back again so what's been done over here is very very simple that uh, this, these are film cans they've disappeared after digital mobile technology film, films the camera reels used to and the discovery was that they go very snugly into a world bicycle tube. How much we discovered? We 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 inundated with man-made stupid materials They're lying all over the place. <laughs> so there could be no better enough for innovation than now, right? We just have to look critically. I always go. I'll just show you this is the bag which I always carry with me. <laughs> there is a little bag, uh, you know, you just carry with you all the time, like, you know. Picking up bottles, ice cream sticks, lolly sticks, cups. A very nice thing to go for a walk with a tape back like this. You do a little bit for the environment and you make toys with them. It's a nice thing to do. So this is it. So you make these very nice valves. So this is, uh, as you can see, uh, there's a new flap. Can you see this? If I blow, green light. I can pass. Can I suck in air? Red light. One way traffic, that's what a valve is. Excellent. This is the suction valve. And over here, you have the lid of the bottle and you have another valve. This is the delivery valve. So all the, all the elements of a great pump, you have a suction valve, you have a delivery valve, uh, this is the tube for the water to come out or the air to come out, and you have a bellows. This is it. I think if I put a little swab of scent into it, it could, it could be a bang new startup. <laughs> Very nice product. <laughs> it's, uh, this city is reeling with innovation. <laughs> Very nice, I think some of you might like to leave the as you came to university and try your hand at that. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> this is uh, uh, a piece of pipe, plastic pipe, you can use pipe, uh, put wiring inside this about 10 11 inches. And, uh, you take a, a quarter of an A4 size sheet and you can just roll up into a, you see eating chana murmura, it's something like that. <laughs> Not very fancy, you just make a cone like this and when you put the cone over here, it could be any size and you can see that I made a red ring over here. This symbolizes the internal diameter of this, you just cut it over here. So this is what I have, a very nice, extremely nice. There is a cone inside this. Uh, we had. Uh, Madhun Nair, who is the chairman of ISRO, and he was visiting us. So he said, sir, we have a launching pad, <laughs> right? <laughs> and this is fail proof. Sometimes your rockets fail, but <laughs> this doesn't fail at all, right? <laughs> and, and you can see this. <laughs> I, I need two brave hearts to come over here, two of you uh, can come over here and please hold this. Uh, one with one hand, one on the other side. Uh, oh, no, only one hand. Right, so this should be. And you can see this, it, uh, what, a, what a powerful... Oh, is the other one gone? No, oh, he's gone. You can see this. This is a very powerful piece of equipment, right? <laughs> I think uh, that's what our kids should be playing with, then real missiles and guns. Uh, this is what uh, they can do. All this aggression should come out through these simple things <laughs> rather than the big boys games. And <laughs> this is good enough. <laughs> um, this is a very, very, very traditional toy. If you were in Andhra, it would be made with the Palmyra leaf. This is the model of an acrobat. You can see that the head and the body are doubled up. The two layers over here. So there is a crevice between them. You put the shoulder, take a needle and a thread, tie a 
tie a knot, pull out the needle, and tie another thread. So this is the needle and the thread, and this is just a eagle. And if you just do like this. <laughs> very old toy, the traditional in, 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 in Andhra, they would still make it with the palmyra leaf, a very traditional. But, but if you spun it with both hands, it's like a flying man. It's a centrifuge, you know, without being taught, kids can learn the, this is centrifugal force is what? If you spin something, it tends to fly out. Precisely what's happening over here. Right, the, the, the theories and the maths can fit in later, but first get into to feel for the phenomenon, right? That's what it is. Now, this is something which, um, there is a lot of, uh, uh, this is called as a, it's a levitating pencil. And uh, this uh, uh, gave us a lot of glory. Now, you can see there are six magnets over here. There's a piece from a old Hawaii slipper, right? You put four magnets in the particular order. The, 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 this magnet over here, I can, if, I, if another magnet hangs over here, it must be an opposite pole. I need not know which is north, which is south, but I need an opposite pole. So the front one is an opposite pole, so they stick to each other, right? That's the important thing. The rear one, I stick this over here, it's an opposite pole, and then I switch it over. Now they're similar poles, and they don't like each other, so they repel each other, push each other. So the rear ones are similar poles, and this pushes the pencil on the top. So that's different. This is attracting. So if I put my finger over here, you can see this pencil is just hanging in the air. And this could be a, a really, um, uh, this must be some Deviya Shakti or something, right? <laughs> It's, uh, this is uh, magnetic forces. I'm not chanting a mantra. I'm not uh, praying to the Lord above. Uh, they happen because of the properties of material, which is independent of what uh, uh, the thoughts I hold in my head. And now there's a lot of friction between my finger and the pen. I mean, use a Chinese pen, because much cheaper. Uh, two rupees each, two and a half rupees each. And they've got a, now this is a, a glass is very difficult to cut. So if you take a, this is the old CD. And uh, CDs, uh, can be cut very easily with the scissors. They, they don't hurt children. They're very, very smooth. Right. So you put this over here. Now if I take this, it spins, it rotates, levitates, it writes. Very nice. It can, a feel for a maglev train. If you go to Beijing, the airport is 70 kilometers away. You sit in a maglev train, in 10 minutes you are in the Beijing city. And because they fly over a cushion of air, <laughs> there are no rough spots, it's very smooth sailing. But kids can get a very good feel. You can Google Hamsa Padmanabhan, extremely bright guy. Uh, Hamsa Padmanabhan, um, both her parents are astrophysicists, her father is the brightest astrophysicist in Ayuka. Uh, he won the first Infosys Basic Science Award, six years, the International Gravity Award, Thanu Padmanabhan. They have a daughter. Her name is Hamsa. She went to no fancy school, Kendri Vidyalaya, across the road in Ganesh Kent. Extremely bright girl. When she was in a tent, she was fascinated by this. She wrote a mathematical paper on this. Second, first, in, she taught first Intel Award in India. She was taken to Seattle in the US. Second Intel Award worldwide. Uh, she explained how this works. You can see uh, you can see the levitating pencil. You can see Hamsa's paper below it. It's on our way. And if you Google Hamsa Padnavan, seven years down, she, a minor planet is being named after Hamsa because she explained this. And this is the potential of every girl in this country. Right? To gone are the days when we always said, you know, boys do science, girls do soft subjects like the sociology and poetry and literature. But this is the stupidest thing. We have never given our girls a chance to do science. Uh, given, given, I'll give you one example. My daughter went to a very nice school in Delhi. It's the Delhi is called as the Sardar Patel Vidyalaya. The principal was a very visionary lady, Vibha Parth uh, She was the daughter-in-law of G. Parth Sarthi. He was a political advisor to him, and she had husband was is a Shur Parth Sarthi, Secretary of Economics, retired now. Twenty-five years a principal, and she said that first five years, medium of education is Hindi. She said, my kids can compete with anyone in English. So Hindi is a medium of education. These are the values. Six Nobel laureates into the school. Delhi is the 
capital of the biggest and the most vibrant democracy in the world. So anyone, any, who's anybody in the world comes to Delhi for some XYZ reasons, go to Rajgarh, to obeisance to Mahatma Gandhi. And she had the political antennas very well tuned. You ring them up. So we ran the best school in Delhi, 2,000 kids. <laughs> He'd like to invite you, pick you up. <laughs> Please address our students. Six Nobel laureates into the school. I've actually seen Manmohan Singh driving his Maruti 800, giving a lecture on economics and walking off. Uh, Smita Irani, when she was the, she was the Minister of Education, HRD, both her sons went to Sardar Patel, uh, my daughter's classmates were Jairam Ramesh's son and Harsh Vardhan's son, who is now the Minister of Science and Technology. Uh, Manmohan Singh's two grandsons, by the way, went. So did Atal Bihari Vajpayee. He was not married. He had adopted daughter. Granddaughter went to Sardar Patel. The political class knows which is good. And it is a, a very extraordinary principle. Uh, she later on became the chairperson of the National Commission for Women, which is a ministerial post, which is very rare for a school principal. In a school, every boy had to do rangoli. Every boy had to learn how to cook. Says, khana khati to pakana bhi sikho. Hmm? And the girls did everything which was thought boyish. Hmm? In my daughter's class, Amongst the 40 students, amongst the first 10, only girls, two went to, three girls went to NID from a batch. They used to take 60 students, three, that's quite a percentile for one school. Two went to IIT, she went to a medical college. So this is what a good principle, a visionary principle, instead of repeating and shibboleths and stereotypes, could do to change the situation. This is a school which never gave one to first rank, second rank, no. There's a Rangoli competition, right? Uh, you get a merit certificate or you don't get a merit certificate. That's it. If you are thing was above, good. You, everyone got it. So half the class would get a merit certificate. So you're not. And the other half only knows that you could do better next time. That's it. It doesn't put one, two, three. The, these are the uh, very, very, very nice things in that school. Very amazing. Uh, one of her, the 10th, 11th, she had a teacher, Kasturi Basu, JE2. She went to US to the MS in science and came back. I want to become a school teacher. A <laughs> strong feminist and a lovely teacher. So these are the kind of role models we require. There is recently a, 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 a book has come out on women scientists in India. It's just uh, Ashima Dogra and her friend. It's just uh, last month. Very nice. They've documented the stories of 41 women scientists in a graphic format. Earlier we had. Um, uh, Leela Vati's Daughters, which are uneven, but this is a very nice book. Oh, this is, uh, this is a new innovation, and I'd like to show you this. Very nice. Oh, these are these fidget spinners. Very, very popular. Uh, but, well, they were, they've peaked out now, so they're fading down. Uh, they've got ball bearings, so they're factory made, mass produced, very cheap, affordable. <laughs> so three magnets have been stuck on the back of each. And there is a, just as a screw in a net. Again, a coil with thousand turns attached to LED. Nice thing about this. Right. You can't make a thing like this, but you can buy it and just put it like this. Extremely nice. A lot of things with smell. But look, this paper. Uh, if you take a paper, uh, all the old newspapers, magazines, you cut them in squares. <coughs> um, take the, if you fold the square, it becomes a big triangle, fold again, it becomes a small triangle. Uh, this looks like letter V, V for van, V for victory, also looks like the ear of an animal. And uh, we just stare. Four slightly long and rounded ears, fold this to the front, fold this to the back. And this is Mr. Rabbit. Right, you hold the legs just below the body, grab the tail, move the tail. <laughs> now, I made this as a child when I was five, six years old. All these He Man, Skull Man, you know, Barbies, very sexist, very violent toys, unsustainable, right? <laughs> I'd not be there in the world, but kids would still be making a toy like that. It would be a very amazing toy. Right? Uh, uh, this is, of course, there is a documented history. If you take a square piece of paper like this and you fold this, and these kids have been doing this in Japan for 300 years. You make a small, small bird like this, a flapping your bird. It's a very unmatched. 
uh, you know, uh, this origami is uh, ducted into the Japanese religious ritual rites. They would have a rice cake and pray to the god, and the whole family would <laughs> sit down and fold paper. And they've been doing this for 300 years. <laughs> if something is ducted into religion, it goes a very long way. <laughs> you can see this. Unmatched. Just a square piece of paper and your ten little fingers. You know, no glue, no, no scissors. And you make something very amazing like that. Right? Would you like to try this? <laughs> yeah. And what we did was we just cut off the tail and uh, put a fan to this. Just put a small fan. It's a bit of refill, ballpen refill, which is a bush of wearing. There's a paper pin. And this is the helicopter. The children make a helicopter in play. And this is it. And you can. It's aerodynamic. It's eco friendly. It doesn't burn a hole in the pocket. You can't buy this online. You can't buy this in the Diwali sale on Amazon. It's a nice thing about this. But if you're clever and you can pick up an old refill from the roadside, you can make 10 of this. Right? Very amazing. No matter who you are, what you do, something very exciting. It's very nice. Well, two, three more things. And, uh, this is something, uh, this is 30 years back. There's something, an organization called the National Association for the Blind, NAB. So there was a competition that designed teaching aids for preschool children. I always thought that the rubber slipper was a gift to education. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite isolated because, uh, I, because rubber, how I sleep with is, is such a work of material. To cut this is three minutes job, right? And uh, it's white on one side, grey on one side, black on the other. And if you have turned this, black stands on a white background, <laughs> white stands on uh, you know, you could, the other way around. No sharp edges anywhere. If you were to cut it, wood, sawdust will come out. This block would be loose fit. You need a silly backup plate, not in rubber, right? <laughs> Imagine a blind child, a visually challenged, they can actually feel this. 12 million blind children in our country, right? Very little. 12 million of them. There is the software called JAWS uh, for the visually challenged. Uh, my wife worked in the Ferguson College and she worked with 50 visually challenged students. She had to pay 90,000 rupees to install that. This is in a country like Bangalore which does where all the software engineers are doing stuff for the US and the whole world. But there are 12 million visually challenged people working for their free software, you know, demanding them that give us free software for this. There are so many challenges in this country that we don't have. But I thought this is, we made 40 puzzles using the rubber slipper. It's such a lovely, lovely material to do this. Very, very lovely material. It doesn't hurt anyone. And but I will show you one more thing. This is something very nice not designed by us but this is uh, uh, this is a couple uh, who, who had a uh, Nikunj was his name their son's name born 18 years back and uh, uh, the husband works for Israel named the but the wife is from Pune a place called a Skothru in Pune and they designed this for their son and this is velcro velcro near the two strips one with loops the other with hooks and they stick together this is just the hooks, the loop part you discard. So the millions of nylon hooks, which is my drawing slate. And this is my drawing pen. Now essentially it's like a fishing line. You take a bottle, stick a piece of rubber. And the purpose of the rubber is to join the pen to the bottle. And then you bend a bicycle spoke into a Z shape like a, uh, uh, like a crankshaft. Put a piece of rubber, gouge it out so as to make space for some wool. And that's it. So this is, if I crank it, well, the wool gets wrapped up, right? It's like a fishing line, essentially a fishing line. And wool is a lot of fibers, and so any blind child can just draw. That's it. And the fingers are very sensitive. You can actually touch and feel what they are. Well, I can tell you that every blind school uses this now, because this is, you know, many innovations just lie dust, no one cares for them. But this brings a ray of hope into the lives of those who live in darkness. And this has been used in every blind. And you can see on my website, it's called as a, it's called as a touching slate. And that you can see on my website, there's a video of this boy, his parents also in the video, 
uh, there's a there was a teacher from Thailand, from Bangkok, who worked in a special school for the visually challenged. He made these slates for all the children in the school, and which got a very thumping response. A big corporate uh, sponsorship make it for all the blind children in Thailand. So he asked his permission, he readily granted this. Very, very nice thing. Well, in the end, I'm just going to uh, Two more things. This is. Oh, I didn't tell you about this. This is something very nice. It's something called a flex. It's designed by a mathematician at Harvard, 1928. Has a piece of paper, and you could keep. You just fold it, bend it, glue it. It's butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. Butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. Four pictures which come in a sequence one after the other. And you could weave a story in them that the insects eaten by the frogs, frogs eaten by the snakes, snakes eaten by the eagles, just like the food chain. And you could have all kinds of this, like the life cycle of a butterfly, you know, 12 different stages in the life of a butterfly. If you had a piece of A4 size paper like this, that's no glue, no scissors, just need a scale and a pencil. In three minutes, it's called as a flexigan. And you could just fold this. It's amazing that paper could rotate like this. No glue, no scissors in this. Very amazing, 1928. The greatest use of the flexigans have been used by the ad industry. Ad, that ad industry hires the brightest because they want to catch your minds. That's it, what they aim at, right? So first I saw the flexigans was in Australia. There were these all these limousines and all these cars and you just keep flexing them and the message is seeped. That's what they do. And uh, But you can see that there are enormous possibilities for education with this. You can make anything of a cyclic nature and do this, cost very little. But just a A4 size paper, a scale and a pencil, you do this in three minutes. We made a film on this, it's called the Flexigan. Um, ten years back it was dubbed by the Polish Science Academy into the Polish. Within a month, five lakh viewers of the film in Polish. As such is the appetite, some of these. Hungary produces the greatest mathematicians in the world, right? Uh, these countries have enormous amounts of appetite for science and maths. Uh, this is it. If you have a small piece of paper, you can make a small flex. Like that. Uh, you can make a, a very nice greeting card, you know. Uh, happy birthday, grandma, draw some flowers and give it to your granny and she'll be just twiddling her thumbs, right? <laughs> a very nice thing to do. There are not too many, uh, but this is something called as a 14 page unending book. And this is two squares. Just two squares, you need a bit of glue in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is the last page, starts again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, It's a two minute toy. Every child has a favorite story which they can hear 50 times without getting bored. <laughs> Pick up that story, divide this into 14 steps, and draw. So every child has a own, very customized picture, rotating, dynamic picture book. Right? Very nice project for this. The other was, this comes from a book called as the VSO. Handbook for Science Teachers. This is A4 size paper. If you take half a A4 size paper, you make a very nice. This is the scale model of the skeleton, right? This is this size, very really optimal. You can make two of these in a paper like this. So, uh, almost optimally utilized. You make the skull, you make the rib cage, you make the pelvis, the tibia, fibia. The human body has 200 odd bones. And imagine a class four child cutting these and just need a glue stick and the whole skeleton. And this is not just a science project, uh, given the overall political situation in the country. You ask kids, tell me it's a skeleton of a man or a woman. Is it a Hindu? Is it a Christian? Is it a Muslim? The kind of poison which is enter our heads. It is there to probe much deeper questions about society. Right? The genome project only demonstrated that 99.99% of our genes remain the same. Uh, there is uh, so much of overlap in humans, whether we are black, we are white, we are Europeans, or, or Africans. But uh, there is so much of a divisiveness in society. It's an extremely nice project, much more than a science project. Well, in the end, I'll just tell you one story, and this is my favorite story. We make uh, lots of lots of caps using uh, um, half a newspaper, and uh, this is a cricket cap. Cricket is a is a nation's pastime. 
we have produced many greats and we are still producing them. <laughs> we are still not exhausted. There is a new one. <laughs> Ashwood Jaiswal, I read about <laughs> half a newspaper, right? <laughs> and very nice. You come, come, like, stand, come up here, my young cat. And this is, you know, it's a very cool cap, right? It's a very, very cool cap. Right? <laughs> That's you. Of course, a very nice Gandhian cap and Heru cap. <laughs> very much. Uh, you may make a dozen caps using newspapers. Uh, newspaper is the cheapest paper, and uh, it's, uh, if you fold a cap, it's like a geometry laboratory. All the polygons which you talk about in the abstract, you're actually folding it, and in the end, you make something. If one child has a crooked cap, there's a peer pressure. The whole class wants it, <laughs> and they want to do it again and again. So what better way than, of learning than this? Uh, now this is a story, it's called the Captain's Hat story. If you have Topi Shankar, if you have heard Topi Shankar's name, then Topi Shankar was a captain of the water. Topi Shankar was a captain of the first sea-going ship, and uh, there were many passengers in the ship, and the first few days, of course, they enjoyed the journey very much, because it's probably the first to join into the sea. They've been on train, they've flown, but never on the sea. But after a couple of days, all they see is the wide blue ocean, not a patch of land, not a, not a tree. They start becoming bored, they become seasick. Now, Topi Shankar was a very clever man. He saw that all the passengers were getting bored, so he invited them on the deck. You know, sing and dance the whole day, I'll provide you with good food and drinks. Topi Shankar had a suitcase full of different kinds of caps. And every day, he would join the regalia wearing a different cap. First is the huge umbrella cap. If the captain is standing at the deck, it protects him from the scorching sun, protects him from the rain. Well, at night when all the other passengers would go to sleep, Topi Shankar would take the same cap and give it one more fold. And the second day, he would be wearing cap number two. This is a very, it's a designer cap. <laughs> this, is, this is what the firemen wear. The firemen, all firemen, they lead a very hazardous life. They go into a burning house. If some rubble falls, it must protect the spinal cord. It's truly a designer cap. They will shoot the back, right? This is the second one. is the fireman's cap. The second night, he would take the same cap and give it one more fold. And the third day, it would be a shikari cap, adventurous cap, <laughs> and the explorer's cap. And the third night, two more folds. And this is the most important cap. You can see it's like a small cap. I come from Pune, we are not too far, we hold it. Pune has the film archives, also the film institute, and we're not too far away from Mumbai. Uh, all the Bollywood, we churn out over a thousand films every year, and they appreciated the world over. Some of you may not like them, but <laughs> many people in the world like our films. If you see a cop, policeman, in any Bollywood film, this is a, in Marathi, it's called as a Pandu cap. <laughs> Pandu cap is catapulted to glory. It is called as a Pandu cap. So four, ca four caps. It's huge umbrella cap. Second is the fireman's cap. Third is the shikari cap. Fourth is the Pandu cap. We must not forget the Topi Shankar after all. <laughs> he was a captain of the ship. <laughs> and uh, everyone was enjoying the journey very much. All good things must come to an end. Suddenly there is a storm. Kali badli chhajati. Chaka chon bidi chama. Samandar mein aela aagya hai. Uchi uchi lehre uthi. What can a poor ship do? Rock and pitch along with the waves. Ek uchi lehre aati hai. Aisa thapeda maarti hai. It knocks down. People are terrified. Hum log picnic banane aati hai. Our ship is broken into two. And the huge wave comes and slaps the front portion of the ship. Now the ship is sinking into the deep waters. The, the triangular portion of the ship is called as bridge. Now in Urdu there is a saying that it doesn't come for the sake of it, it doesn't come for the sake of it, and a third huge wave comes, slaps the bridge. Now the ship is broken to smithereens. 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 But it's a... Life jacket. That's it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions to ask, please just feel free to ask. Back of my stuff. <coughs> yes. 
still vibrating. Yes. Was the reason behind no, it's still not known here. <laughs> you try it out. I really don't know. <laughs> there are, if you go to the net, it's called as a whammy diddle. Just Google whammy diddle. Six research papers on this. Right. But if every child can do it. <laughs> That's the nice thing about this. Well, if the answer was very simple, the NCRT would have adopted it. <laughs> yes, please. With all of this going on in Hoshangabad with the science program, uh, this was a rampant requirement for little things with which children can make and do their own experiments, the kind of things which he has shown to you. And we found that uh, getting right kind of material was very, very significant. And there was a teacher, an old teacher, Devedi ji, whose passion was to collect, as he said, Nijhora Lekar, who was a hospital, ke paas rehte thi. his house was near a hospital, and he would collect all the syringes, he would collect all the syringes and tubes and bottles from that hospital waste, and store it in a bora, and bring it to the Eklavya office, time and again, whenever his bora got filled, he would bring it, ki now you can distribute it to the school so that children can do this kind of a thing. And he just did it on his own. Every few months he would come and deliver that bora to Eklavya. And what really, what really made it so poignant for me was that the day the government passed the order in 2002 to stop the program, a day before that, Dwayne Ji had brought a whole pour up of this kind of material to distribute. And I was thinking that here is an old retired teacher, still from his own passion here, yeah, just collecting all this stuff and delivering it so that it can go to the schools and children can do this kind of work. And so that such kind of programs can live on the ground as a living reality. And here is a government which is so insensitive and uh, unmindful of what people are doing to make this kind of, of thing a success. So Arvind is very right that it's something which every child and every teacher can actually put their heart into and actually make it a real living situation rather than a theoretical situation. Just wanted to share, I remember it very much. Any other questions? Ask without the mic. Anyone? Yes. My name is Tara. I'm a teacher here at Primus Public School. And I just came here. I just came here to thank you and then see you in person. I would have seen you thousand times on the TED Talk or uh, the talk that you gave at IIT but my only uh, purpose of coming here is to see you live in person and I just <laughs> waiting for an opportunity Thanks. to say uh, thank you not just from me from my sixth grade students I have uh, uh, science I run science club at my school and uh, I had to one day motivate them to participate for this Raman award competitions uh, they are based on your uh, uh, ideologies think tank if you know so I had to motivate them uh, to participate in the competition and then I was telling them all about how good they have to be and all that nothing is inspiring them then it just sparked me what if I just show you a TED talk to them I just open randomly your video and then I showed and then you should see the uh, happiness on the they're not government school they're from an international school but still the way you have done it especially for the last cap scene they were like so captured everyone stood in the class and they were clapping their hands and then today morning when I said I may go to sir's talk then they were like ma'am please go and tell sir thank you and then okay. they were really inspired that day by seeing yours <laughs> and then thank you for all the work that you do sir thank you so much sometimes you hear such stuff it's sponsored this is it <laughs> I don't know the meaning <laughs> uh, sir yeah. uh, uh, here <coughs> Uh, uh, thank you for a very inspiring and very uh, engaging uh, talk that you gave. Uh, firstly, I wanted to understand when you first started this off, uh, how did you start off? How did you start this? Like, was it a center kind of thing and then you invited <coughs> children there or was it you approached schools and... Uh, no, I think they, they, it's, it's very long. The student IT can see, I joined IT Khan in 1970. The 70s were very different times. Uh, in 68, there was a student uprising in France, students challenging authority. You had the Naxal movement. 
uh, you had the Jay Prakash Narayan movement. 62 Rachel Carson had written a book called The Silent Springs, which ushered in the environmental movement, the feminist movement in Kali. But whenever there is a, a kind of political churning of society, it unleashes a lot of creativity. As compared, to, these are very placid times, right? And there were many people who were thinking of scientists that, they, you know, the Second World War was well, just 20 years back, that we are not going to engage with making bombs and guns and missiles, right? Uh, we are not going to, we, we can't do good to humanity, let's not kill humanity in the name of nationalism, in the name of religion, caste. We will not do that. So many people were seriously thinking for a meaningful role for themselves. You know, Anil Sad Gopal was part of that. And so in IIT, there was a group called as, the, called Sahyog. Uh, IIT Kanpur was set up by a consortium of nine American universities, very tailor-made for uh, the American system. And we had a campus school and the Kendri Vidyale. The mess servants, the Malis, the Chokidars, the guards, their kids could never get into the central school. They're not central. So some kind of faculty had started a small school called as the Opportunity School in IIT Kanpur. So three, four of us. Uh, one is a very famous man. His name is Ashok Junjunwala. Uh, he is, you know, if you've heard about IIT Madras, which is the best, he is the father of incubation in the country, Ashok Junjunwala. Very amazing man. So Ashok, me, three, four of us, we used to bunk a day and just go and teach in the Opportunity School. And we did pretty well in our studies. Two, three years back, uh, we, I was invited to IIT Kanpur. The management has actually given a whole space. There were 300 students in the, camp, in the opportunity school. So I was very happy to see this. And, that, and I, then I went to the Hushingabad Science. I spent six months there in 78, which was a kind of a, it was a new window to me. That this is what I'm good at, pretty good at that. Now where do I use my IT background? Do I go to a multinational work there? Do I go to America? 200 of my batchmates, the president, CEOs of companies in the US. Should I do that? I found a very nice role for myself. Every day I'm invited to a school with kids. I, I just uh, reinvent myself. I feel so happy. And I just pray someday if I must die giving a lecture to kids. And that's a good death for a good man. <laughs> that's what I dream of. So that's it. And then 11 years I was invited. Professor Narikal gave the talk last year. He was my mentor. 2003 he invited me that. One of his friends in Maharashtra, he is the cultural icon of Maharashtra, Pula Deshpande, uh, one of the amazing people. His book sold by the millions, he had no children, and he donated for all progressive causes. Forty years he spent his summers with Baba Amte. And I first heard about Pula Deshpande from Guruji, Vishnu Chinchilkar, who also spent forty years with Baba Amte. So uh, Pula Deshpande donated 40 lakh rupees 20 years back to Ayuka to build a science center. And he said, we are building the science center and I've heard you've come in Pune, why don't you work over here? And I was very privileged to work there for 11 years. Uh, two amazing colleagues. Uh, they did all the hard work. I sometimes get the credit, which is, which is uh, not, not true because these, one was uh, Dr. Vidla Maiska. She was a, a biochemist, spent four years as a postdoc at Stanford, came back and she read about me. She said, I just want to work with you. 7,000 rupees, that's what she got for seven, eight years, a month. And she, we worked together for 11 years. Another person, Ashok Rupner, who shot all these. 11, 11, one video every day. 350 of her videos are in Spanish. 26 countries speak Spanish. So right from there, we said that we must work for the poorest child and we must be global. It doesn't, you know, this village, that small thing, it's okay, right? We, everything should be free. And nothing to sell, right? And it should be free every day. I'll tell you one story. This is, in the last century, UNESCO recognizes three great Indian pedagogues. Mahatma Gandhi, Ravindra Tagore, and one more. He's from Pune, J.P. Nayak. Many of you might have not heard his name, but UNESCO recognizes. Very amazing, this found amazing chap. No one can do a PhD in education in this country unless you the great Krish, Krish Kumar, a friend, the director of the NCRT, finished his PhD in Canada, Toronto University, came back to Pune because he wanted to work with J.P. Nayak. That's why he landed up in. Now, they are dead long back and 75 volumes on education. We scanned all of them and put them online. They should be accessible. So we did work which was out of our way. 
today the archive.org is the greatest repository of books which have been there for 21 years. I'm probably the only Indian who's contributed 9,500 books. Every day, 10 books. No organization, no funds. For, funders can go boot. I care too. Hoot. <laughs> if you do good work, someone will feed you. Right? <laughs> Don't be so. Someone will feed, feed you. Every day, 15,000 books are downloaded from my website, which just shows the hunger for good books in our people. Yesterday, I came early. My friends allowed me to come early. I went to Navkarnataka. Right? I have an agenda for coming over here, and not just this lecture. I have been collaborating with Navkarnataka. They are the best publisher, one of the very good publishers in, in uh, Canada. Twenty years back, I sent them 20 books. Sir, no copyrights, print them. <laughs> Let's collaborate and bring good books in Canada. 20 books. Bahru Gandhi is in Canada because of them. They, they printed 20 books. So this uh, Navkarnataka, uh, they are the inheritors of the People's Publishing House. I was in a small town of Bareilly. My parents could never buy a newspaper, much less books. Uh, my whole interest in science, I owe to Perelman. <laughs> His small little books which I could find in Hindi on the roadside, fun with physics, fun with maths. Perelman was the father of uh, Soviet popular science. And in Hindi, I could buy them. So I went to Karnataka. They are my friends. I have collaborated with them. I said, bring out all your Canada. 1990, Soviet Union collapsed. They printed all these Soviet children's books in Canada. The communists have very little vision. But this year, man had some 40 books, children's books in Canada. So in my, in my mobile, I said, sir, let me just scan the front cover and the back cover. Then I'll trouble you later, but I know what is there with you. <laughs> That's what I did with Nav Karnataka. And soon I said, I'm coming again in January or February, and I'll put them all on the archives. So we must keep doing every day, expanding this range. Yeah, I was in the board of the National Book Press for 14 years. I've seen the poverty of material in Hindi. Right? And so, we a book a day into Hindi. Great children's books, they're accessible on the net. Put them on. We leave all this in the wind for the next generation to come. That's fine. That's I beseech all of you, you not just study, translate books, create stuff in your own, your own language. Right? This is, as I say, that the Education terrain is extremely difficult. It's a stony terrain, barren terrain. Even if it's sort of good seed, it will wilt away. No soil. Our task every day is to make a handful of soil. Don't look what the others are doing. I will do this every day. One handful of soil every day, that should sustain my life. Hello, sir. Uh Firstly, uh, I echo the sentiments of this teacher over here. While you mentioned that you know we read textbooks and science shouldn't be that, I think it's similar. We can see a lot of your videos, but it's a totally different thing to come and see it in person. Uh, so very, very interesting. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, you know the government has got out this scheme called Atal Tinkering Labs. I have, I'm an alumni of uh, Azim Prem University itself. I graduated this year. I do have a school and I've applied for the lab. Hopefully, I should be getting it this year. But one of the things I felt, and I don't know, I would like to hear your views, is that you mentioned how labs and schools are there, you know, test tube, dust pora rehta hai and all that. Somewhere, though I aspirationally, we want to get it into our school, I have this thing in me that, well, isn't that lab way too high in terms of its, uh, the kind of stuff that it's trying to get? Because these are simple things, easy conceptually to understand, that talks about robotics, 3D printing, and so on and so forth. So wouldn't it have been better that instead of spending 20 lakhs into so many schools, there may have been 20,000 into what, 2 lakh labs of this simple nature, and has somebody approached you and said, should we be doing this as a country or no, something lots, like of, lots of people, you see, I don't have the energy to do that. You are very right. You see, today everyone talks about robotics, artificial intelligence. These are, every era has its buzzwords, so to say. That's where funding is available. You talk about artificial intelligence, the government is frightening you, everyone is going to lose their jobs, so better learn this. Otherwise, you're gone. You're a loser. Right? That's what people say. But as I keep, you know, we have neither the warp nor the weft. <laughs> there is no basis. Then you graduate on, see the whole world, beat the world at their own game. But start with somewhere. And you're very right about the, what I've heard about the adult thinking. I've unfortunately been too busy with my work to travel and see these. But what I've told is that whenever a government scheme like this comes on a mass scale, 
there are many contractors which spring up and they you know you know on a <laughs> they will set up a lab for you and they would have their own interest you know they'll put a 3d a 3d printer right which may be necessary or no at all so we just thought that we, this is our hope for the people just put everything in as many languages kannada i must tell you this was just one man he actually was very close associate worked for 20 years with narinda bolkar huh? the pk nanavati he was born in belgaum kannada and marathi both his equal command of both these languages one man nanavati dubbed a thousand of our videos into kannada just one single man no money exchange this is the kind of great craft so forget about you know people and hope comes from the most unexpected quarters right, right. Uh, there was a, a someone who owns a franchise of the dps school in ludhiana he visited us and he said what very nice man he realized what you're doing how can i help you i said we need no no help you have a school in ludhiana delhi public school please get a video dubbed into punjabi no take us to punjabi still odia bangla one is ashamed bangla they say that we had the revolution uh, 200 years back we have had a renasa but they are not glued up <laughs> science is back today in bengal very bad 30 years of communist rule and now this present scenario very bad not a single book into bangla not a, just a few videos individual friends if they had done this in bangla uh, bangladesh uh, which is you know teachers in bangladesh and students could benefit malayalam we failed odia we have failed but whatever languages we found so 800 videos in punjabi we have on our website because of punjabi so wherever we found collaborators just collaborate chinese there is great upsurge in china now i have actually four invitations to go to china uh, so give a lecture here give a lecture there my first book khel khel mein matrix models is coming to chinese last year it came into chinese so there is a great upsurge in china they put the cr videos no youtube is banned in china google is banned go do through not they were equivalent to youtube in china so i just put my videos in you in google drive give it to them they can download them very easily and put them on chinese sites even the english ones they are self explanatory clever people just need not hear it they can just see the video and understand it out of it uh, i don't even know how to thank him <laughs> <laughs> i'll just share couple of memories one is that in the uh, uh, 1990s uh, i kept encountering a number of very inexpensive books written by a person called arvind gupta you know and really really cheap 5 rupees book and very nice you know then i happened to meet him and i asked him about this and he said can look i've been uh, going around finding these very nice books on education but they are very expensive they are all published abroad and they are all in english so what i do is i take those books and i translate them or i make an indian edition and i publish them for 5 5 rupees so i said they give me permission to do that he told me that yes sir, many of them give permission they have no problem if somebody doesn't give permission i change the story or something a little bit and publish <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah. and this was his period when he was right the publishing these books and ikleb also published for from but not but the first books i read of his were published by ikleb then it seems uh, around the late 90s somebody gave him a scanner he didn't buy it somebody gave him a scanner and he started scanning these books and he started putting them up and this is um, uh one of the most amazing websites uh, i have ever seen you know almost every major not at the perhaps that but very many very good uh, books on on uh, education you'll find on this and his videos and so on now it's uh, so many languages also you know so uh, just uh, um uh sandeepan deb in his book on the iitians uh, says that of all he interviewed a lot of iitians to write a book on the iit and in which he said that the three most interesting hours he spent interviewing people were of course spent with arvind bhai over there you know the uh, um, i'll just stop by saying that uh, i think we are all not only grateful for the many things he teaches us but for particularly for this thing that how it is possible to be so sincere 
and to be so uh, completely connected with good things you know and to have a life to try to spend a life doing good things you know that is one great thing one learn from learns from arvind bhai you know thank you so much arvind bhai for coming <laughs> <laughs> deeply grateful